from beginning of celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening to you all. Amen. And welcome to this Mass. Today, my brothers and sisters, the Lord is asking us to unburden others. And there are so many ways we can do them, not placing burdens on others. The early church, the Jews felt, well, salvation belongs to us, it is our right. But the Lord, in talking to us, getting back to us of the apostles, chapter number 10 said, no, it is not like that. He sent Peter to the house of Cornelius. And today he says the same thing, sending the elite to go back and tell those who are from Antioch and Syria and other places. You must not be circumcised to become Christians. And the disciples stood among themselves, men of integrity, to go and pass on that message. They went there, they did not lie. They did not waste the words. But they followed the words of James. Let us not burden them. Let us teach them what is right. <coughs> to abstain from illicit marriage. To abstain from meat sacrificed to idols and from sandwood and from blood. Jesus has chosen us, my brothers and sisters, to become his messengers, to go out and bring joy to the lives of others. Let us ask ourselves, are we doing that? At this mass, we pray that God may open up our hearts and open up our minds to accept the truth and follow his commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this mass, we are requested to pray for people of the parish. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters who have traveled for the Memorial Day weekend. And all travelers within this time will pray for safety for them through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are sinners in need of God's grace. Let us therefore take a moment to record the times we have sinned against God and man, to be sorry for those times and humbly ask God for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make your dwelling among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us to the heavenly city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Oh 
let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. chosen was Judas, and who was called Barabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to you brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Celia, of the Gentile origin, greet. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teaching and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one according decided to choose representatives to send them to you alone with our beloved Barabbas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will always convey this same message by the word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond necessity, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Amen.
great I am, and shows me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall, with twelve gates, where the twelve angels were stationed, and on which the names were inscribed, the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. There were twelve gates facing east, twelve, uh, three north, and three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stone as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its light was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God wants to fill this house with gifts. Unfortunately, in many other places in the scripture, we learn of those who chose not to be there. We've been talking about the book of Revelation for the last several weeks. Since we have reached the climax of the book, it would be negligent not to say anything about it today. John, the author of the book, has a vision of heaven, the source of hope for our people who were suffering for their belief in Christ. Today's reading gives us just a hint of what heaven will be like. Expressed symbolically as a new and eternal Jerusalem. The author has to use symbols because it will be so much a new heaven and a new earth that there's no way we could ever grasp what it might be like while we are still far in this world. Today's reading tells us the New Jerusalem has a massive kind of wall of it. At one time, all large cities were encircled by walls for security from wild animals and hostile neighbors. In another part of Revelation, we're told that those walls were 1,500 miles high, and each of the four walls were 1,500 miles in length. Thus far, perfect. The wall was 200 feet thick. Does that speak security to you? The foundation stones for the wall were various gems on which the names of the 12 apostles were written, showing the city is founded on the apostles. Notice there is 12 gates. The gates of the city open to all directions, indicating that God's kingdom is open to all people. The gates are each made of single pearl, thus the term pearly gates. The gates were inscribed on them the names of twelve tribes of Israel, indicating the Old Testament roots of our faith. The dimensions of the city would be about half the size of the United States. That's some city for you to think about. The size which for the people of those days must have seemed infinite symbolize the multitude of people that will build God's kingdom. The city was beautiful beyond belief. The city is without a temple, which says we will experience God directly. No temple is needed. It needs no light, for it's the source of light is God and Jesus. God's victorious Son, who is fullness of life. Much more is said about heaven in the last two chapters. It is where we all hope to be someday. Today's gospel gives us a map, as it were, to direct us to the new creation God is preparing for those who love him. Jesus tells us, whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and my God will be with him. What this means is, if we want to someday dwell in the new internal Jerusalem, it has to begin in this world with God's dwelling in us. That union between God and ourselves will constitute the true joy of heaven. Jesus tells us today, having God dwell in us involves keeping Jesus' word. Jesus goes on to explain the special help we will have to enable us to keep this word. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent is among him will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The word teach really jumped out at me. To their credit, I've met so many people who want to be close to God, and they want to experience God, but they want it almost simultaneously. Just by saying a prayer or receiving a sacrament, they want God to somehow magically transform them. They're looking for a shortcut to help them avoid all the effort of learning and growing into what God wants for us. They want it all right now. Heaven and all the wonderful things of knowing God. <coughs> but this word teach tells us something else. Growing and knowing, loving God and growing in us, is a more unselfish way. Growing in the ability to pray. Growing in holiness takes patience and time and effort. It's an effort that brings many rewards.
but it's not automatic and not without challenges. The Holy Spirit teaches us if we want to learn. If we don't want to give up too much, God growing in us and our growing with Him is the true joy that awaits us. Our gospel, which was taken from Jesus' word at the Last Supper, according to John, Jesus has just told his apostles that soon he would reveal himself to the apostles, but not to the world. This one of the apostles asked what this means. This is where our gospel begins, Jesus answers. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Perhaps Jesus could have added, we will make our dwelling with him in this life, and he or she will make his or her dwelling with me in my Father's house in the next life. When I was reading this passage earlier about Jesus revealing himself, I always tend to think of God or Jesus revealed himself to me. I can love him more. But in these statements of vision, Jesus, he is telling us, loving him has to perceive him revealing himself to us. As Jesus said right before this gospel, whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. First comes loving him, and then comes seeing him. There is one more piece of this process. First has to come obedience. Jesus said, whoever loves me will keep me. In other words, love is not something nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. It is a practical, down-to-earth thing. It's more what we do than what we feel. Our culture pays attention only to the feeling part of love. And that's why many people have forgotten that love involves the things we do towards God and to each other. There is a road map to the heavenly Jerusalem that Jesus is giving us today. First is the way of obedience, which leads to love, which leads to revealing himself to us and our dwelling with him for eternity. May the Holy Spirit be active, guide us today. Brothers and sisters, let us bring our needs and our joys before God, asking that He sends the Holy Spirit to enlighten us and help us demonstrate the fact that we are Christians. For the church, that we may continue to attend peace to all those in need, especially victims of war, violence, loss, and other troubles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations that are at war, that they may find a way to peace and avoid further bloodshed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, and therapists, that they may bring peace of mind to those who are troubled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our 
May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be confirmed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time I go forth to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every lamb, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Archbishop, 
Charles is auxiliary in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Saints, St. Paul, St. Patrick, St. Francis, St. Ignatius, St. Anthony, St. Lawrence, St. Bartholomew, St. Demas, St. Timothy, St. Elizabeth, St. Veronica, St. Cecilia, St. Andy Bobre, St. Josephine Bakita, St. Monica, St. Catherine, St. Agatha, St. Lucy, St. Anne, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be good earth to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold Jesus Christ. Behold him, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those of us called to this circle of the Lamb.
let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the restoration of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this living food, through Christ our Lord. Good evening. Good well, I've got some good news, huh, Father? We have been very blessed. Father doesn't even know the results totally, but last week we went with the Pregnancy Resource Center and we went to the bank, and here's the results. The pink bottle, $400.11. The blue bottle, $1,337.87. It's better. The, there was 62 baby bottles turned in at a total of $1,649.69. Out of that, the coins alone were $900, over $900, and the dollar bills was over $600. Gave us a grand total. Before I give you the grand total, um, Gail, the director, said that they're associated with 33 churches, and we hold the record. The record is, are you ready? $3,387.67. And I have five minutes. I warned you, I can't see the next <laughs> But it is your own. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we are back. And, um, I just want to say thank you, and I'm proud of When I say Sacred Heart Family, I mean it. Our family is growing in love and understanding, and we shall continue to grow. The woman said it before me, and she was like, we have never heard something like this from any parish. In the archdiocese of Gavastin history, we have set a record. And I said to her, it's not a question of number. It's because of the love we have for ourselves. And we are bounded by love that we believe by what Jesus said. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you do it to me. We want to affect Jesus. We want to shake his hands. We want to see him at the hospital. We want to see him born freely. And we contribute to that. And she was happy. So I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for your contributions. Never get tired. Because you know why? God will never get tired of giving back to you. And in so many ways, they will continue to reach out to you. And it was so funny, you know. Because the money was too much. We counted and counted and counted, and the machine broke down. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? It did. It, did. Yeah. it broke down. So we had to pack. And I was busy, but at the time I got tired, I hadn't eaten lunch. I was busy eating popcorn. <laughs> because the bank was popping up the doors, and I was busy enjoying and waiting. So when the machine broke down, I said, Lord, thank you. Let me go home and eat. <laughs> so when they said, no, we have to take the money back, then get the, the woman will meet us again in, um, in Crosby. For them to finish. And on that day, I prayed that she doesn't call me, and she did it. <laughs> so thank you very much for all your works in the name of God. And I pray that God may reward and visit each and every one of you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Father Tony, I need your word of us, you know him very well. Um, he gave some gifts to, to some of the parishioners. He bought them and sent them to me. And that is what we do as missionaries. And he said, Give this to that your son who reads the Bible every Sunday. 
You know who I'm talking about? Yes. The small boy. So there's a gift for him, and there's a gift for another person who impressed him. It is natural. So when you bless us, we we'll bless others. And I want you to know that all missionaries everywhere pray for their parishioners, pray for their loved ones, and those who affect them positively. Continue to pray for us, and we shall continue to pray for you, and we shall continue to make a better church. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Do have a wonderful night rest and a blessed Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Please join us in singing number 720.